Friday morning networking of 2021. And uh, <clears throat> I know that uh, there may have been points last year that uh, some, one, or all of us were wondering if we'd ever make it through 2020. But uh, you're looking at the proof. Here we are. It's 2021 and you made it. So uh, I think that there's a lot of resilience and community care that we can take out of last year. And um, uh, similar to the message that uh, Joe and I were recording, um, there's, there's value in taking care of one another. And I very much hope that we can bring that spirit into the new year um, and that this new year is better for all of us. Since this is our first um, <clears throat> networking of the year, uh, I'd love it if we'd renew the old tradition today just to quickly go around the room and do a brief, uh, hello, my name is, and I'm here. I know we all know one another, but uh, I, still, I still like hearing your voices. I like hearing who you are, and I like, I like hearing your story. So uh, on my screen, if we go around my screen, it's going to start with uh, Julia, actually. Well, thank you for Christopher. Uh, good morning. I'm Julia Fowler and I own Blue Moon Coffee, um, celebrating its 20th year in 2021. Uh, so we made it to this milestone. We'll see if we can get that place back open um, as we move to phase two. Uh, but here, um, still involved in the chamber community, uh, whether or not my business is uh, open or not, feel free to reach out to me. I'd love to have coffee with you somewhere. Thank you. Thank you so much, Julia. Diane, you're next on my screen. Good morning, everyone. Happy New Year. I'm Diane Mead. I own Pets First, Diane's Priority Pet Care, which is going into its official like 16th or I don't, I, anyway, it's getting there. Um, and that puts me even older yet, but that's a good thing. And uh, I board dogs in my home as family members and then also make calls to the pets' homes, all kinds of pets. And uh, I'm just looking forward to being able to help serve more people that are doing happy things like going on vacations and so on in the future, rather than just a lot of my clients have had medical issues and needed care for their pet while they were um, dealing with their medical issues. So it's just great to have a new year happening and welcome to everyone. It absolutely is, Diane, thank you. Tom, you're next on my screen. And I should say Anastasia will be after that. I should start letting people know who's on deck. Tom, are you still with us? We can come back to Tom if he's not near his microphone. So we'll say Anastasia. Hi, my name is Anastasia U. Meisner and I'm the presenter for today. So I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> Fantastic. We're looking forward to hearing from you, Anastasia. Ed, followed by Kim. Hi, I'm Ed Popkin. And uh, this, is, I'm, this is probably my 21st year with, uh, with the Chamber of Networking. And uh, I've been retired uh, as a pharmacist and a teacher. So I'm looking forward to 2021. <laughs> it's going to be the best year yet. Well, we're looking forward to having you with us. Kim? Good morning. My name is Kim Clifton. Uh, I'm the owner of Sirius Baking Company. Like Julia, I am currently not doing business, uh, but I am staying active in the chamber. I'm a member of the board and uh, an ambassador. And uh, good morning, everybody. Good morning, Kim. Thank you for being here. Sarah will be followed by Mike on my screen. Hi, I'm Sarah with JAG. We do printing and promotional products. And um, my interns are Beth and Lily. We're eight months old now and getting more mobile by the day. <laughs> nice. And it was great to see how they've taken on that yoga pose. That was very strong. Lily in particular is very good at the, the forward fold right now. There you go. Good. Mike? Hey, good Friday morning, all. Good to see you. Uh, Mike Class from Chem and IT. We're a Microsoft Gold partner. So anything Microsoft, we live in that world. And um, just wanted to compliment you, Chris, on that beautiful bow tie you have. 
Well, thank you so much, Michael. I know opinions are split. Uh, I'll, I'll take the positive view from you. Christine, you are next on my screen, followed by Stephanie. Good morning, I'm Christine Boyer with the Academy of Modern Martial Arts, and I'm also an ambassador here for the Chamber. It's good and, to see you all this morning and Happy New Year. And an amazing bow tie tire she is. Stephanie? <laughs> Good morning, this is Stephanie with Neurotherapeutic Pediatric Therapies, where my role there is fundraiser and development manager, and also proud ambassador of Lake Oswego Chamber. Fantastic, thank you, Stephanie. Next on my screen is Katie and then Robin. Good morning, I'm Katie Brower Voida with Lucid Dog Training and I co-own this business with my husband Chris and we do private in-home dog training that's COVID safe and we also do online training so we get to help people with their dogs and their COVID puppies and their Christmas puppies <laughs> and all sorts of different puppies that come their way. Puppies, dogs, all of them. So um, happy new year to everyone and I'll be, thank you. Thanks, Katie. Great to hear your voice. Robin? Good morning, everyone. Happy New Year. I'm Robin Krakauer with the Arts Council of Lake Oswego. I am responsible for the development and communication. And I have Nicole on here today, too, but I'm going to do a little plug for our Art Mart. It starts today at 10 o'clock, and it's um, a fundraiser for the Arts Council, but it's actually for the community. People donate their art and then um, we actually resell it. So if you're looking for that great background for Zoom right now, we have you covered. So come by, we are open uh, Tuesday through Friday, 10 to five and Saturday, 10 to two. Beautiful, thank you, Robin. Uh, <clears throat> Steve, I'm, I finally get to hear your voice in our meeting. I'm looking forward to hearing from Steve, which will be followed by Lynn on my screen. Good morning. I'm Steve with Umpqua Bank Home Lending. And I'm not in a bank location, so they allow me to come in intermittently to my office to do some things. But most of us are still working at home. Well, it's wonderful to hear your voice, Steve. Thanks for joining us. I know you can't always stay long, so I'm glad we got to see you this morning. Lynn? Good morning, everyone. I'm uh, Lynn Brokaw with, uh, well, as Ed Popkin says, retired teacher. Uh, uh, and now an ambassador with the Lake Oswego Chamber and a member probably about with the Ed, about 20 years. And then uh, I'm with Hassan Company Realtors uh, and uh, Lake Oswego Meals on Wheels. And it's great to see everybody this morning. Excellent. Nicole will be followed by uh, Tan Maya. Thank you, Lynn. Good morning, everyone. I'm Nicole Nathan. I'm the executive director at the Arts Council of Lake Oswego. And Robin already told you what we've got going on. So uh, we do the public art program on behalf of the city and then have a um, gallery at 41B, uh, which we have exhibitions in all year. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Tan Maya. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tan Maya. I'm the director of One River School, and um, we do K through 12 art classes and design classes. And we're doing both in studio and online options. Um, and we have our student exhibition up, so you can walk by the window and look at student work. We can't have people in the space, but <laughs> at least, you know, there's that little plug for our little guys and medium sized guys. Nice. Something about children's artwork certainly lifts the heart and brings a smile to the face. Right. Happy New Year, everyone. Indeed, Tanmaya. Next on my screen, I've got Amy Valentine, which will be followed by Catherine. Good to see you, Amy. You're, you're on mute. I, I guess that's going to be a popular phrase going into 2021 as well. There well, you have me, Kay Valentine. Amy will be here shortly. Uh, we're going to take turns. We're really busy this morning, so when I'm finished, she'll come in. Uh, Amy and Joe and I own Dino's Pizzeria, and we've been chamber members, I think, going on 25 years now. Quarter of a century. <laughs> well, happy New Year. Thank you. Catherine? Good morning. 
I'm Catherine Burge, and I have Lake Oswego Pet sitting for the past seven years. And hello to, Happy New Year to all those I know, and it looks like some people I don't know yet. Uh, licensed, bonded, and insured, and just trying to survive through COVID. We, a lot of clients can't travel, obviously, but some have, and it's, sometimes it's last minute, which is interesting. You know, they're waiting for their COVID test to find out if they could travel. Um, and then you just wait to see if everything's going to work out. So it's been interesting and I've just, you know, uh, I've always done professional photography. Um, and so now I'm had more clients asking for that. So I'm segueing into, into doing more professional work with uh, the pets. So that's been really fun for me. And, um, hello to my fellow people out there, Katie. Um, just the dog training and there's three of us on here today so it's a really booming business and it's just navigating and trying to make sure you're meeting the clients needs whatever they are right now so I do I do the professional pet sitting I do training but it's more specific to and Katie knows this too I'm sure by now it's like reactive dogs so what reactive and then leash pulling so those more the people are calling me for those things but thank you so much for the time i haven't met a lot of people just message me if you'd like to know more thank That's you fantastic Catherine. thank you for being with us today genevieve are you there yes i, I am can you hear me yes okay good morning and happy new year to everybody uh as you'll look at my photo you'll see my new rose gold glasses which i just got yesterday so i my other ones were lost in macy's the weekend before thanksgiving so i'm happy to have my new ones and i can drive safely in the dusk and the evening if necessary our lions club has been very active during the christmas holidays we did provide uh, clothing toys and food to a needy family of six uh, we did provide um, clothing, jackets, scarves, and things, working with Sparrow Services to get those distributed, and they were all cleaned clothes that went out to them. So uh, now we're looking for some new service projects. If you have a, a special project you would like the Lions to participate in, we do serve, get in touch with me, and we'll go from there. Perfect, thank you, Genevieve, for both for being here and for all your work in the community. Uh, my, the last row on my screen is going to be Heidi, Cassandra, Carrie, Tom, and Dr. Rami. So, Heidi. Hello, my name is Heidi Adler, and I am the general manager at Yoga 6 that is coming in um, down by the Whole Foods Ace Hardware area. And um, I live here in Lake Oswego. So, uh, this is. Um, I love Lake Oswego, I love yoga, so getting this opportunity this year to help build this yoga community has been kind of my, uh, my COVID silver lining. So I'm really excited about it and um, excited to be a part of the chamber. I've really enjoyed it. I'm new to it and I've really enjoyed it. So thanks. Absolutely. Uh, fantastic to have you here and building your business and becoming a part of the community even before your studio is open. So we really appreciate you being here and, and taking part. Thanks. Cassandra? Good morning, everyone. My name is Cassandra Carlson. I'm with CMG Financial. I do residential mortgage lending, and I also do reverse and renovation loans as well. Beautiful. Lovely to see you today. Carrie, you are a new person to our group from central office, no less. I sure am. Nice to meet everybody. Um, my name is Carrie Jeske, and I'm with central office, and Liz is sitting over there. So, um, it's very nice to be invited to this meeting. So nice to meet everybody. So not sure if you're familiar with Central Office. We're a flex space provider um, located right at the corner of 3rd and B, um, right in downtown Lake Oswego. It's a beautiful space. And um, we would love, you know, just, um, and I'm sure Liz is saying, it's hard to do it during these times, but, you know, if, if you do want to, you know, have an opportunity to check it out, welcome to set you up here for the day and have you try it out for the day. So thank you for having me. Absolutely. Now central office is like the newest, hippest, coolest thing, right? 
It, it sure is. And it's a little bit different. And, you know, just, just so everyone's aware, I'm in, in, I'm in one of the offices and I don't have a mask on, um, but in all the, the open areas there, you know, masks are required. And, um, you know, we adhere to, you know, the, the COVID cleaning standards and um, we're more of a flex space provider than like uh, co-working. So when you think of that, it's more you have your own space. We're 90% um, private offices um, and 10% shared. So it's a beautiful space. So definitely encourage you to try it out for your next meeting or just if you want to try it out for the day. Excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you. Claire, and thank you for being here with us. Thank you for Tom. having me, Liz. <laughs> Tom, welcome back. Good morning, Christopher. Uh, happy New Year, everybody. Um, my name is Tom Diamore. I'm a trial lawyer here in Lake Oswego. Um, I represent people that have been catastrophically injured, wrongful death, and victims of sexual abuse. Well, thank you very much for your service. We're glad to have you. For those that don't know, Tom is also one of the tri-chairs on our Leadership Lake Oswego program giving his time and attention to make our leadership program go as well as it's going so far. So thank you for that, Tom. We're happy to have you. You bet, thanks. And the last person on my screen, but certainly not least, Dr. Rami. Hello. Sorry, I had to step away for a second. Good morning, everybody. Happy New Year. Hopefully 2021 will be great for everybody. Uh, I'm Dr. Rami Leyes. I'm the chiropractor and owner of the Back in Line Chiropractic and Wellness in downtown Lake Oswego on 2nd Street. Uh, we provide chiropractic, acupuncture, and massage services. Um, we try to help active people to stay active and injury-free. Uh, also, if you, um, um, hopefully not, but if you get into a car accident, we uh, help you out to get back on track and get your body strong and um, not having any sequela down the road. Um, please come and visit us. We're on 2nd Street under um, Charisman Frame Shop. Excellent. Thank you so much, Dr. Rami. Now, my screen shifted once during this, but I'm pretty sure I got everybody. Is there anybody that didn't get an opportunity to introduce themselves? I know Kay's still on and Amy hasn't shown up yet. Uh, looks like I've got everybody. All right. Liz, uh, I think that means without further ado that we get to uh, introduce Anastasia for her presentation. Um, so Anastasia, thank you so much uh, for being with us today. Are you ready to come off mute and enthrall us with uh, business news and acumen? Uh, I don't know about enthrall. I almost used a sound clip that had snoring on it. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's interesting. Uh, Christopher might run a little bit more than five minutes. If it, is that okay? I could, okay, okay. And Liz, do I just hit the screen share and just try to do it? Um, yes, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Let me, let me see what I can do here. Screen share, blah, share. Does anybody see anything that looks like screen share? You're good. Okay, I, can, I think I gotta start the actual. Presentation. Does that, do, do people see something that looks like a slide? Okay. Okay. It's really hard. Okay. I don't know where to put my pictures. Okay. So, uh, my name's Anastasia U. Meisner. I'm an estate planner. I uh, received my license in 1998, but I kicked around a little bit working for the Oregon State Bar and this or that for a while. So I've been practicing law since 2001, and it was a combination of business and estate planning. And I slowly morphed into more uh, estate planning work. I had my own practice in Lake Oswego for 15 years, uh, was Guyer Meisner and Attorneys. We started off in the Lake Grove building, and then we purchased a building on Jean. And actually the chamber did an open house for us. It was really nice. And then I switched and went to a firm in downtown Portland and the name Samuel Joel and Cantor. They've been around for 90 plus years. They started as an upstart Jewish firm because the uh, a gentleman who had ranked top in his class and bar exam couldn't get a job in a downtown firm. And then his nephew couldn't as well. And 
but it's been around for 90 plus years and we have about 20 attorneys. Probably total staff is around 40. And I think that sh we do have offices in other locations in downtown Portland, even though we do provide um, valid, we validate parking. I know no one wants to go downtown. So I practice both in downtown and on Meadows at 4800. We have offices in Hood River and in Vancouver as well. Okay, so enough of that. Let's see, I gotta advance my, I got people in my way. Oh, I see, okay. So, I wanted to thank a few people in our office that helped me present, prepare the slideshow because I don't do all these areas of law. I really am mostly an estate planner with, with a twist in business and real estate, but it's not my main areas. So Denise Garrell, a partner at the firm, does real estate. Jessa McConnell, she's also a partner, does bankruptcy. And then Valerie Sasaki, a partner, does tax law. And they all helped me, they gave me some uh, content for the presentation. The big caveat is this is just legal information. It's only for informational purposes. It's not legal advice. So if you have a particular situation, then you really should seek a professional, either if it's a tax issue, CPA attorney, or if it's just pure legal, uh, an attorney, and get their advice. And if, there's, if you have really in-depth questions, I'm probably gonna have to punt and say I have to get back to you. So today we'll be talking about covering taxes, debtor creditor issues, employment, landlord tenant, and estate planning, and I'll have questions at the end. Does that sound okay with everybody? So taxes, this is where I was gonna have the little snoring clip. Taxes give me a headache, uh, but I couldn't do it. And my uh, high school son helped me do the clip and then I couldn't put it in. So we had some significant changes in the last few years. Most recently though, there was Congress passed a COVID relief bill on the 21st of December, which was signed by the president on the 27th. And the big thing for that is you can deduct your uh, PPP loan expenses. So if you've, if you've received PPP loan money, then it's gonna be forgiven and it's gonna be forgiven. You can still tax deduct it, which is really a double dip. So that's, that's huge. The other big thing that's only for two years is that you can do 100% deduction on uh, meals related to your business. A couple years ago, there was a big change in the tax laws and that was taken away partially. It was 50% and that got a lot of people upset. Uh, we still have a problem with entertainment expenses. It's not so easy to deduct those. But the big thing is for two years, you can go out and have meals with clients or build business network and you can take 100% deduction. People call that the three martini lunch. So debtor creditor. So the new COVID relief bill provides another round of PPP loans. And folks who have received PPP loans the first round, they can receive them again, but there are some qualifications. You have to have 300 employees or less. First time borrowers are possible, but you have to, um, it's for a lot more employees. So if you're a repeat borrower, then you're gonna to have to be able to say that you, you either have to have used all, all of your initial PPP loan, or you have to be able to state that you will use all that PPP loan. Also repeat borrowers have to show that there's been a 25% gross revenue decline in any particular quarter. So if, if, if you had a first quarter 2019, and then you compare that to first quarter 2020 and you had a 25% revenue decline, then you will qualify for, or you, you meet the criteria, one of the criteria for the second PPP loan, okay? But you can't compare like first quarter 2019 to third quarter 2020. Does that make sense? So on, additionally on the debtor creditor side, the debtor bankruptcy attorney, I, uh, Jessica wanted me to emphasize that some folks think that if they're in an LLC, or um, usually with LLC members, they think that they are, can avoid personal liability. And that's not the case with uh, unpaid payroll taxes. So as an employer, 
if an employer fails to pay payroll taxes, then they can be personally liable. And the situation does come up. She sees, I don't know if I want to say frequently, but when a business owner is financially distressed and they've, they've in a sense, are holding the unemployment tax that they haven't paid and given it over to the IRS, they see that as a pot of money with the thought that they're going to backfill and pay it when another another when income more income comes in and invariably that doesn't happen and that's where it starts to become a slippery slope and an employer can slash business owner can end up being um have a shortfall and not pay the payroll tax and then have exposure to personal liability also key employees can also uh have exposure if they're involved in making decisions about uh, paying payroll taxes and handling money also, when uh, business owners uh, find themselves in insolvency and they're not paying creditors in the right order, they can be personally liable for that. And insolvency means uh, when bills come due to the business and they have and they're not able to pay those bills as they come in. Okay, so an Oregon requires that creditors are paid in a certain order, and then if they're not paid in that order, then you have personal liability. Another issue uh, also is if, if a business is insolvent, meaning they can't pay those bills as they're coming in, then they uh, can't make distributions to, their, to the owners or other members. They can do payroll, by regular payroll, but if they're doing draws, then that's a problem. So I, there might be some folks that have questions about employment law, so I thought it would be good to put some um, information in the presentation. And so employees, if they have a flex spending account for like healthcare or uh, like dependent care for children, like um, uh, daycare, then they can roll it over to the next year, which is nice. And then I think it, folks might have had questions. They may not uh, are aware that employers can require that their employees uh, take the COVID vac vaccine. They, they can require them to do take a shot, just like you could with the flu. There are exceptions to that rule, um, such as sincere religious belief, an underlying medical condition, or if you've got a, a, a union shop situation, sometimes uh, those bargaining agreements will have some uh, limitations on uh, what kind of requirements employers can have on employees. But the, but the vast majority of employer-employee situations fall under the category that if an employer chooses to require their employees to be vaccinated, they can do that. If an employee does have a sincerely held religious belief or the underlying medical condition or, or disability, so a reason, then they need to notify the employer and then the employer does have to provide reasonable accommodations. And that's under uh, Civil Rights Act and also under, um, oh gosh, Title VII? Can't remember. Uh, okay, but so, so those, are, those are federally, uh, essentially those are federally mandated, but there's also Oregon rules that can supersede, but those are the general rules. Landlord tenant, some of this may apply to some folks just personally, and then some of this information might apply to folks um, as tenants or landlords. So I thought I'd, I'd provide a little bit of landlord tenant information. So in Oregon, at the end of 2020, we had a, a third special session, I believe it was the third one. And residential evictions, there's a, the moratorium has ex, been extended out until June. So June 20th, June 30th, 2021. That's for the all of Oregon. I'll get into Multnomah County, uh, City of Portland, which is slightly different later. So in order though, for a tenant, residential tenant, to take advantage of that extension to go out to June 30th of 2021, they have to, uh, the landlord has to provide them and then the tenant has to sign and return a notice of eviction protection. So there'll be some information in there about how the tenant can't pay and, and some assurances for, uh, making statements that can be, uh, how would I say, how would I say that? Uh, statements that can be um, upheld in a court of law, okay? 
So there's also an extension on the grace period for unpaid rent balances. And there is some money for landlords to receive uh, compensation for lost rent. But there's a trade off on that in that the landlord has to agree to forgive 20% of the unpaid rent in order for them to actually get compensated from the fund. Okay. And then in, in Multnomah County, City of Portland, the residential eviction moratorium ends July 2nd of 2021. Okay. For commercial space, the moratorium ended on September 30th, 2020. Okay. There is a grace period on uh, rent. So that ends March 31st of 2021. And that's only for rent that was from April 1st, 2020 through September 3rd, 2020. So if you have rent that was, due, that was owed after September 3rd, 2020, you have to pay that. There is no grace period. So estate planning, some folks who have received PPP loans may also be in the process of doing some of their typical estate plan gifting or they want to transfer their business to somebody else or sell it. There are, there are provisions in those PPP loans that says that you can't transfer interest in the business without the lender's approval. So if you get us, if you through the Small Business Association, a small business administration went through, let's say, um, I don't know, Home Street Bank and got a PPP loan, you have to go back to Home Street Bank to get approval for a transfer. And they probably will say no until it actually gets forgiven. And that's going to take a while for that paperwork to all happen. But be aware that that notification is a requirement. And I believe all of those PPP loans. Okay. Another issue, just I'm not going to go all the way into estate planning, but just for in terms of uh, business owners, to be aware that if you have incapacity, meaning um, you went to the hospital, you have a traumatic brain injury, whatever, it can be really difficult for your own business to operate properly, right? Because you're the key, you're the owner, you're the probably the key employee too. So you want to look at your power of attorney, make sure that the language in there talks about what happens if you as a business owner become incapacitated. Do you want just any old person to be running your business or do you have like a a specific person you want to be in charge of your business and then you want somebody else to be in charge of the rest of your financial life. This is also a good time to look at uh, your corporate resolutions to make sure that they're up to date and also match who you want to manage your business should you be unable to do that. Also your succession plan, do you have something in place if you pass away? And then make sure that if you have your company documents also talk about who are your successors, what are your uh, what kind of uh, documentation do you have with your bank? So if you become incapacitated, the bank is very aware that somebody else can write checks, et cetera. I can't even tell what time it is, so I don't even know if I went five minutes or three minutes or seven, I don't know. But does That's anybody true. have questions? Well, Anastasia, I think that was awesome. Thank you very much. And because uh, we, uh, went around the room and, and that went as long as it did. I think what I'll, I'll do is say, thank you. It looks like you kind of walked us through the forest, pointed out all the quicksand, and uh, there's quite a few different areas in there. And uh, I think questions are something, can we just say that um, if people contact you after the fact, you can either help them or refer them to resources to be helped with questions on that? Yeah, what I'll do is I'll type in into the chat my contact information. Right. Okay. Because uh, that was quite the, um, there's quite a bit of quicksand out there. Thank you for making us aware of all the places where we need to be careful where, we, where we're stepping right now. I think that was a great overview of the landscape. Uh, how's everybody feel? Thank, a big thank you to Anastasia. You're welcome. Sorry. That's kind of what we do is we look for problem, 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 and then assess how big of a problem. Do we need to worry about that or can we just let that one go? Well, Christine and I do the same thing. We're, when we're out on a walk, we're like, there's something, don't step in that. And if we do that well enough, uh, yeah, we come home and we still smell all right, right? <clears throat> so thank you very much, uh, Anastasia. And uh, Liz, is it time to 
go into some small groups so we can chat with one another very quickly and check in with everybody? It absolutely is. And we will be sending you into the rooms for eight minutes. You have a facilitator in each of your rooms to make sure that everybody gets a chance to talk. And one person will come back and report at the very end. With that, I am opening the rooms and off you go.